time is it? Your show. Yeah, what time is it? Your show. Yeah, what time is it? Your show. Yeah, he's back from the dead. Your show. Putting it on the map, yeah. Saskatoon. Right next to New York. New York. Yeah, what show, yeah. Your show. What time is it? Your show. Yeah, time to talk some shit, yeah. Your show. Yeah, yeah fun Maggie. Bark, bark, wolf, wolf, who wants a treat, yeah? Keep listening. All right. Welcome to the Friday edition of your show. What a week it has been. I hope you haven't flown away like most people out there. I was out the willows this morning, uh, golfing with my dad and my brother. And you want to talk about like being in Scotland. It was basically, we were out there, man. We were out there at the British Open. The windiest I've ever golfed in my life. And it was so fun. So hopefully, again, you haven't ended up in Kansas or anything like that as the wind continues to blow. But the weekend is so close. We are so, so close. And it's been a great week. And we're about to make it better for you because it's almost like clockwork now. Like she's like trained to do this. The reason we're all here is to check out the Maggie Cam. Look at her. God, is she not the most beautiful puppy you've ever seen. I totally get why Leroy is dating her now. By the way, the Maggie Cam for our good friends over at Pet Planet on 8th Street, your pet's natural grocer. Ah, Mike and Rochelle and their dog Leroy, yes, who just so happens to be Maggie's boyfriend. Look, she even gets excited when I say his name. You like Leroy, Marge? You a big Leroy fan? Uh oh, there might be trouble in paradise. I'm not sure. Either way, the best pet store on planet Earth, okay? They take such great care of you, uh, be it treats or even outfits. Her straight out of the dog park shirt just got washed, and we're going to wear it all weekend long because she absolutely loves it. They got all the toys, everything waiting for you over at Pet Planet on A Street, your pet's natural grocer. Be sure to go by and say hello as your day always gets better. That's how it works around there. Around here, Fridays are usually a big recap if you will, a party, a whole lot of fun as we wind down from the week that was. Uh, we get stop bys from the Commander Cookout podcast crew, that being Network Ryan and Uncle Brando. As well, we get stop bys from the past our bedtime podcast crew, and we uh, decided to do a little previously recorded segment today as they had to go out and do a bunch of stuff, and they also, well, I'll just let them explain it because it's very, very humorous. So please enjoy this previously recorded segment with the past our bedtime gals. Chill out. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. It's past our bedtime. As you can see, uh, we got a super fan here for the berries hanging out. Her name is Brooksy. Uh, her co-host, Hardcora, over on the side. What's she representing today? Uh, cats. cats. That is a sick a, shirt. What's it say on there? <laughs> they told me I could be anything. I became a burrito. <laughs> oh, I became a burrito. <laughs> and I just got my silly super kick club shirt. I feel like I should have dressed up for this. Yeah, we sorry, are. Guys. We no. just filmed. We just filmed a podcast. Yeah, I heard it went well. You guys did really good. None. Game changer. None of that. No. We filmed two podcasts today and none of them had audio. So we won't have a podcast for the next two weeks. Yes, basically. you will. We're going to figure out what we can do. You got to post something. We're well, so busy the next two weeks. Both yeah. of us. Okay, I'll take care of it. Like, maybe, maybe we might be able to do, no. no. One? There's no way. Because I was going to film the one for this weekend, like, edit the one for this weekend, and then I'm gone all next week camping, yep. and then I was going to edit it right when I got back from camping, the next one. Could we film when you get back from camping? What day do you get back? Thursday? I get back on Thursday. We could film Friday. Interesting. Anyway. This is we, very intriguing stuff. We, yeah. uh, yeah, so we had an issue, and... So today we're going to talk about maybe some of the topics we're going to talk about on our podcast. I was going to say, I think it would be great if we took the topics that you had and just did our own past our bedtime right now on this lovely little Friday. Wow. Perfect. Well, so take it away. I am now a guest on the show. Uh, I guess you do the welcome. Go ahead. All right. Welcome to, to past our bedtime. bedtime. And then we <laughs> cheers. You did it. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> you guys got those Yay, And then you take a little sip. Mm -hmm. What are we going to talk about today, Wendy? Oh. Today we're going to talk about events and event planning. And uh, event planning is your specialty. Yes. 
And you wow. know what? It's a good to, to have you here because I know that you don't really <laughs> like events, but you've been to some. Been to way too many. And you can talk about your your side of the experience. I can't wait. And why you might not like events. Well, we should give some background. Both of us took event planning or program planning in college. Ah, and so event planner. Yeah, yeah, we had lots of experience doing it. Yeah, we took our roles. Yeah. What, what goes on in event planning school? Oh, so we had to plan like events, like big events. So there was three, <laughs> wait, like real life events. It wasn't just a paper. You actually course, planned yeah. an event. Okay. So one was our graduation. One was like a, like a run and one was a fundraiser. So I was on the fundraising team and we fundraised money for canine dog rescue. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And okay. we were having a, a dog fashion show. Double in. Yeah, and we called it Hollywood Paws of Fame. Triple in. <laughs> and we had like silent auction, 50-50, and I was telling Cora how hard that class was because... It wasn't hard for me. It was hard. <laughs> it was like the so much information you had to like take in and like remember. And then we had to do this like booklet that was like 500 pages long. I think that was the hardest part. Ugh. And it Gross. was just like, it was a binder. It was of an event binder. And so it came in sections as to like risk management, you know, timelines, too much. all this other things. Well, it, I mean, that's like what you should be doing. Like triple, triple space, yes. like 40 size font type of thing. No, no 12 you times, guys, new, no. times new Roman. What does that get? <laughs> why? Why would you do that? Anyway, we oh, had to. It's a good horrible. skill to that's, have. Anyway, so. Uh, well, I want to hear more about the uh, puppy party. It was hard, but. Was there a video? I don't know if I have any videos oh, of it, I would love which to see was that. sad what because it was so cute. The event of the year. Yeah, we got like uh, clothes donated for the dogs. So they were all in little outfits and we walked them down. And It's like Maggie and her straight out of the dog park. <laughs> yeah, that she got exactly. On her latest adventure. Shout out to Pet Plan on East Street. She would have made a beautiful model. I'm telling you, she should be a model. We're she wasting should. her model years. Yeah, and... Yeah, so we got, I think some dogs were adopted after and we raised a bunch of money for but that. But what was your mark? What do you mean? <laughs> Did they mark your event? Yes. Yeah, what'd you get? Oh, I didn't get very good. Okay, so this is where <laughs> this is where we come in and I was like complaining is that we're, it's a group effort, right? Okay. And so we had like one group leader who was like leading everyone and she was in charge of like a lot of like the main things and her, one of her job, uh, my job, first of all, was to be the volunteer manager. So I f got all the volunteers and I gave them each assignments and I met with them before and I give them a paper of their duties and blah, 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 blah. I organized all of them and what Good they job. were doing. And the canine dog rescue was supposed to come with one dog and one hand handler. But when they came, it was one handler and like four dogs. That's not good. So we didn't have enough people to do the the Walk, walkout the walkout the actual modeling so then i had to pull my volunteers out of their positions and put them in to do this and none of them were really happy so when we got our evaluation back all of the evaluations from the the volunteers and our classmates the only bad thing on there was that they were confused about their position and what they needed to do because they were told one thing and then they showed up and had to do something else, which welcome was not my fault. Welcome to events. That's yeah. the whole and, point. And that's, that's the yeah. thing too. But I got, Jeez. I got reamed and I, it was like one of the only bad thing, things on these evaluation cards. So I, I didn't end up getting a really good grade, but I thought I but did. But that was out good. of, that was out of your power. That I was know. out of, ooh, but, I don't like that. But that's all, that's all you can do. I you know, I still passed the your, class. I got some just words for your class, teacher. This is ridiculous. But, <laughs> but. I, and I had a lot of fun doing it. And I still learned so much. Like, Did the puppies get to walk the runway? Yes. And, and What everyone... kind of human being doesn't want to walk a puppy down a runway in a puppy dog show? Well, it's not that they... You have to write some kind of Evaluation. feedback. You have feedback. to. Yeah. So if that's the only thing that they can think of, then they're all going to write it down, right? Okay. But so that's like... If that's the only thing, why'd you get a bad mark? Because I was in charge of volunteers and the volunteers were the ones complaining about what they were doing. <laughs> this is dumb. <laughs> this is all just dumb. Anyway, there had to be something. I'm upset you had to put on something behalf. on there. And okay. I mean, it it is true. We should have had, there should have been more people. And we did ask for one person, one dog. Yeah. And they just showed up with not that many people. And that happened and whatever. And that's just a part of event yeah. planning. Yeah, and you okay. know what? You should be grateful that it happened in college and didn't happen in real life. In real life? So, you know, oh, yeah. because you learned from it. But yeah. even then, like, if it happened in real life, that like when I worked at the Russian the Blades, that happened all the time. Yeah, yeah. it's just normal. Pick That's it up what and, I mean. Yeah. yeah, nobody would be like, 
oh, like you did so bad. This is like your fault. No, it's a group effort. <laughs> it's always a group effort yeah. with events because it's such a big thing that happens, right? And yeah. In my role, we do a lot of events too. So mm-hmm. still. Yeah. So. And yeah, Cora, you should talk about what your event was because she didn't. Let's do the I'm ready. Run. Yeah. Uh, I'm well, ready the college for this. one is like whatever. We did a run, a 5K run, <laughs> and where people who were running dressed up as superheroes, and then we had villains chasing them, and we had volunteers <laughs> that were villains. In, in the and middle what of did, winter. What but, did you What did you call it? Uh, superheroes versus villains run. But the event that I want to talk about is the one that I worked uh, I worked in a small town just a couple hours out of Saskatoon as the director of Parks, Culture, and Recreation. And we brought Parks the, and Rec? Yeah. Parks and Very Rec. Very fun. And <laughs> we brought in the uh, Montreal Canadiens alumni team to play our rec hockey team. And the, all the money raised from the event went towards, you know, three of the organizations in the community. I think it was Minor Hockey, a food bank, and someone else. But uh, we auctioned off, like, positions, like, to play on the team. Nice. We auctioned off, like, a bodyguard for the Montreal Canadiens. We au- auctioned off, like, sp- like spots in the bleachers, like, best seating and stuff like that. And all the money raised went to With auctions, I feel like any time I've been around auctions for <laughs> human beings... They never go well. Why? Why? Like, What's your experience? Well, no one ever pays. It's always so embarrassing because people go up there and then oh. they're like, all right, start the bidding at $100. And then it's just dead. And the guy looks or the girl looks around and is like, oh, boy. Are you like All right, let's bring it down to $75. Are you talking about like when a person's up there? Yeah. 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 Being, yeah. Oh, well, I think this is different because you're auctioning for like there's like a bodyguard position and people want to So that's not someone's it. not actually on the stage. Yeah. yeah Whereas like saying. when you're auctioning for people, that's, that's super what I, I don't like that. That's like when I get Ugh. caddies <laughs> at, yeah. at the golf course and we're like. Good luck. And then you're like, yeah, I remember going to the fundraiser. I can't think of it right now, but we had to auction for caddies and this one guy every year always brought a backpack filled with things filled with alcohol bubbles glow sticks sunscreen like like every a caddy porta party like the right caddy there, yeah. and where where was this like what event and or what i was a golf we... tournament to raise money for make a wish foundation that like was it. in roster oh, in, or where? no here in saskatoon okay. I forget which golf course. It'll come to me just like the other one did. Of but course. Anyway, and he would like go around and show all the tables like what was What's in his bag. Yeah. He would always get bid at like people would buy him for like $2,000 and everyone else would be gone for so like that's what you $200. Do. You that's it. And yeah. he really sold himself. Yeah. And he was you like, yeah, he's like, I have this. And in his bio, he had all this stuff and all the reasons. He had umbrellas. He's prepared. Like, Everything you yeah. could possibly think of when, when you're golfing and more he had. And I think that's the trick. So if you're ever being sold again, <laughs> sell yourself better. It's, sell yourself yeah. better. <laughs> that's, I guess that's like a story of my life. I think I've never been one to sell myself. I can't get into sales either. Like just pay me for a job. Pay me to do a yeah. job. Like I don't want to do sales. I could never. I don't know. I feel like I could maybe do. I did sales a little bit when I worked at the Rush and the Blades. So... I mean, I think I could do it. I've never been trained in it, but I, I made a lot of money while I was there. I will tell you one thing. We could definitely use a salesperson around here. There you go, Andy. Oh, well, if you want to add to the resume, <laughs> we'll be happy to get you out there. I think you'd be fantastic. I didn't even think about that until this very second. I'll be selling, I'll be selling this someone. and myself at the same time. And your soul. Be and so my busy. soul, because I'm yeah. now a salesperson. But you will <laughs> Sorry, also... <Brad. laughs> but you, I was gonna. I, was, I didn't want to say anything, but I, I feel like you have no. someone right there who's very good at sales. No, that could probably really show you the ropes. But he's bit. really good at it. He's amazing. He is, and that's yeah. how I think he got me to be his wife. Oh, he sold you. He sold, he sold me sold right ya. at the beginning. He's like, I might have, sense. I might have three kids and be eleven years older than you, but <laughs> you're gonna marry me. <laughs> and the greatest dude ever. Honestly, it's it's not that, hard that to sell it. when you're as sexy and sweet as Brad. Yeah, when you have like a really like, I think that's why Brad does so good is because like there's some salesmen, especially like car salesmen, not mm. like there's sleazy. some. Not everyone's the same, but they're yeah. so like yeah. sleazy yeah. and like you can tell and they're like mean about it. Whereas Brad, I think, has like really good like intentions. And, he's, and you can tell that's the difference. That's why people like dealing with him because he's not going to chase you with a bat. You know, yeah. he's not going to take out your kneecaps. No, one hundred percent. And that's like he's half the so battle. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I feel like he's trained you enough and you're ready. So we're going to give you some leads and we'll see if you can make some sales around here. Okay. I even made a sale. You know, I made a sale. How? Today? When? Uh, when? Yesterday. Hammer time roofing. Stop. Hammer time. Oh. Nah, nah, <laughs> Hello nah, to nah. Kevin. Nah, Hammer nah. time roofing. Nah, nah. It's going to be starting next That's week. Awesome. we got a banner going up. Yeah. So he's coming in for a couple months until winter time because obviously you don't do much roofing in winter time. So yeah. it was hard. Sales are so hard. That's what I'm learning. I have all these people that we talk to and then... You know, you open up the communication, you go back and forth, and then everything just sort of goes. 
So, and then Network Ryan yells at you and says, what the hell? What are you doing? Why aren't we on this? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not a salesperson. Did you, like in this book, is there anything about sales? <laughs> not about sales, but about team building. Oh, so you could build bonding. a team of... Have you not noticed how tight this team has become here, you guys? Yeah. Like we're a family and it's because of this book right here. It's Shout out to our book. Wednesday guests from Australia. Teams that swear by each other, not about each other. It needs to go on some sort of audio book so I can listen to it. I do it's, a lot it's, of driving. It's really good. Like he, he, he does it so well in that you read it and you learn, but you're not like, ugh, like you're not understanding anything. Like everything yeah. makes sense, mm -hmm. even to me. And he breaks it down. So it's like, basically he'll say, like one chapter will be all about how you know, opening up to your to your team will form a bond because obviously it's like you're talking about stuff that doesn't normally get talked about and then everyone wants to go to bat for each other. It's really cool. There's so much that I'm learning in there and a lot yeah. of stuff that I was doing wrong and that we've sort of fixed and that has become better because as you can tell, this place is rolling right now. <laughs> yeah. We are rolling. We're dream Did team. You guys it's tape? a lot of fun. Uh, Wendy getting beat in uh, Nintendo 64. Actually, it's on I, there. I went to go look at the Twitch stream to see if I could see it. I don't know how Twitch works though. And mm. I couldn't see anything on Twitch. So then it's, I was like... I'm pretty sure it's saved on the laptop. I need to get LB to show me where to find it because it's, it's going to be just five <laughs> minutes of Brooksy freaking <laughs> out. <laughs> Exactly Freaking out, <laughs> making up every excuse, okay. telling us how she hates everyone. I was like, <laughs> controllers don't work. You're yeah. so okay. cheap. No, Everyone's the ganging up on me. The controllers don't bull. work. Wasn't me. That was Ryan the whole time. This controller that sucks. You have the only good controller. It's gonna be a really good highlight. And, and anyway, but I did say a lot. Like once we started doing the teams, I was like, it's because I'm sitting up here, or yeah. it's because I didn't use Kirby, or like I was just like excuse. After it was just it the was, stupidest thing. It was very humorous. But yeah, but very at that point, funny. I thought I was just being funny, which <laughs> and you did win a lot. I did win a lot. Mm. Well, yeah. You know who else, surprisingly? Or not. Noah came in. The phenom. The, yes, this He's young kid experience. who's probably never played Nintendo 64 in his life. I don't even know. He came in and he whooped our butt with Jigglypuff. Like the stupid... I don't know what any of those are. Oh, my God. It's a character? Yeah, he's like a stupid I Pokemon no that like, what sings <laughs> people he, to sleep. But he played uh, Super Smash 5 and 6. Yeah. So oh. he had some experience, just not just, on the lower level. It was just so wild. And I kept on getting so mad at him. You could hear me a lot being like, and Jigglypuff. <laughs> <That's so bad. laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna find that tape. That's what needs to be done. Yeah. I want to know how the race went, the superheroes versus villains race. Oh yeah. Uh, Wendy doesn't have a good experience <laughs> because she was a volunteer. See, the volunteers was, never have a good experience. She, she I think is what I realized. This is not a good commercial for volunteering. Like no, we are it's all not. about I volunteering. Like volunteering. Yeah. Still, it's even after important. this, whoever was leading the run, I was inside and I was running things inside, so I wasn't outside. But whoever was leading the run, so like the pace bunny, went the wrong way. <laughs> the pace bunny. Yeah, the, that's what they're the, called. The yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> the, the, it's like the groundhog <laughs> or groundhog, the greyhound races. The, yeah. the bunny pace open. bunny yeah. also like didn't live in Saskatoon, like come from Saskatoon. She came from Regina, so I don't think she like knew which what way was, to go. What was she dressed up as? I don't even remember. I don't know, probably so Superman ago. or something. I don't know. Yeah, it I'm was. Trying to so think what would ago. be a good superhero to chase. But basically, what had happened? Not the Flash. Would be bad. The event, I think itself, was like really good. Everything was really set up well, and everyone was super into it in their costumes. It was super funny seeing everyone running in their costumes yeah, everyone was downtown. It. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. That. But for me, and I was probably the only one that experienced this, I was the first person when you cross the bridge to tell people which way to go. Oh, and oh it the was, direction person. Yeah, and it was like minus, <laughs> it was like minus 25, so cold. I think cold. she's exaggerating. I don't know if it was minus 25. It was cold it enough. Was windy. Really it was cold. cold enough that my phone wasn't working. Like my phone turned off because it was so cold. It That's how cool. That's didn't charge cold. it. No, mm. it was charged. It just literally died from being so cold. You got a lot of excuses. That's for sure. It died. Okay. Okay. So then they went the wrong a couple way. Couple marks off, I think. There, right? <laughs> they went the wrong way, okay. and I was the first person that was supposed to be picked up. But because they went the wrong way, the truck or whatever followed them and started picking up the people that were dropped off last. So I was dropped off first. Oh no. And then they went the wrong way and I was literally freezing and there's these guys coming asking me if I wanted like drugs because I'm standing underneath this bridge, right? And I was like so freaked Hold out. Hold on a second. Yes. Some dudes just came up to you like, hey, you want some drugs? They're just like, we're walking by and they're like, you want drugs? Like they were kidding around, but you can tell they were all like, thug looking i was like but at that time i was like thug looking whatever they were probably my neighbors so, <laughs> I, was just, so I was just like 
there. Yeah. So I was just like, no, I don't. But I started like getting like freaked out that I like it was so cold. I still had my phone at the time. So I texted my boyfriend at the time and I was like, hey, like I'm stuck here. And I noticed that they went the other way. And I'm like so mad right now because it's so cold or whatever. And then my phone ended up dying after I texted him that. And he came from Martinsville all the way to Saskatoon and came and got me and put me in his car. And I sat there for like 15, 20 minutes before the racers even got there. And I was so cold. And then I got out and we, whatever, sent them away. And I was like, I think I'm supposed to wait here for somebody to come and pick me up. So I got back in the car once they left and nobody came and picked me up and he had to drive me to the event thing and i was like everybody forgot about me out it, in the cold and i had no phone it sounds like <laughs> it was crazy there should be f's across the board for planning on this event planning <laughs> sorry sorry carl i feel like <laughs> somebody dropped the ball a little bit on planning how was, this is supposed to operate it was just uh, it didn't matter it was in college that's true. No, and that that's and true. honestly, that's just a thing to learn because in events like we've been saying a bunch, things happen, right? Yeah. And yeah. you have to be quick on your toes to think about it. But even like Cora, because she was in that group planning it, but she was like inside, you know, and like dealing with a bunch of other stuff that was going on. So like Yeah, one of our one of our classmates was drunk and she was supposed to be a volunteer. Yeah, nice. she had to get sent home. And so it was like Ooh. a lot going on. But I What was I got, her mark? Did she do well? No, she I only think she, I think she dropped oh. out of the class. Right after Jeez. that. Yeah. I think they oh, yeah. she dropped out right after that. She never came back. Wow. Yeah. And I so I came back and I was so grumpy and everyone was so happy because I, they got dropped off last and then picked up first. And so everyone was like yeah. fine and I was like you guys forgot about me out there. Somebody had to come and drive me back. If he didn't come and pick me up, I would have had to walk all the way back there without my phone. And wow. they would have all probably been gone by the time I got back. Dude, <laughs> that crazy. that boyfriend is like Brad level right there. Oh, that was, not that one. No, no I just I didn't mean for that. Uh, obviously, for that one move. No. That was very kind. That was like, that was like the only nice thing you probably ever did. Okay. The whole relationship. <laughs> no, all four years I was with him. <laughs> And he probably did it to love bomb me because he cheated on me the week before or something. Ah, nice. Yeah. Relationships. So fun. <laughs> Look at you guys go. Anyway, so that was hers. And then we also, there was another group that did our grad and our grad was really good. And I think they ended up getting a pretty good mark. Was too. that like the final for the class? No, that, that was no? just, we split up into three groups and then we. It was the final. Oh, sorry. For the class. Yes. Yeah. The yes. event was. Yeah. Sorry. And then they got the grad and they did our whole grad and it was like Gatsby themed and it was at Ooh, Western Gatsby. Development Museum. It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, yeah, basically. Event planning. And then you went on and you did a bunch of it and it's exactly what we just all said. It's, Crazy. you can plan as much as you want, but you're still going to leave someone in the freezing, <laughs> yeah. freezing weather. You're still going to have people showing up drunk and quitting. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. true. So it, technically that program worked really good for you guys, yeah. I think. Hey? Set us up for everyday life. Yeah. 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 Not just for event planning, just life as a whole. Absolutely. Have you wow. ever had like a time in all the events you went to where like, okay, wait, wait, this isn't an event, but I got to bring up the story. There we go. Do you remember when we went to the Rattlers game together <laughs> to do the... Do I? <laughs> to do the cut-in or whatever? The windstorm. The live on location. The windstorm. <laughs> this is crazy. So we <laughs> we went to go do this live on location, me and Gary, mm -hmm. and everything was set up and the Rattlers brought out their like basketball hoop thing yeah, yeah that was awesome yeah and we had this tent and everything outside but there's supposed to be a giant like storm and we could see the storm coming and we kept on it was big. we kept on asking them do you think we should like move inside and they're like no oh, i don't think so then they came out to come get their stupid basketball thing and while they were grabbing it they're like oh yeah we were told to take this in because there's like a windstorm coming and i was like do you think we should like go inside <laughs> did you guys like have a tent set up and yeah yeah a tent and gary oh, yeah, had a bunch thing. of prizes all sorts of stuff <laughs> <Yes>. so, everything <laughs> it's so crazy and as i was asking him do you think we should go inside too then he's like oh no i don't know they just want us to bring this in as he said that <laughs> This fucking gust of wind comes in so wild. It takes our whole tent. <laughs> like away? Like, yeah. yeah, but it was attached. It was attached to this like wheelchair access thing. So yeah. it, it couldn't actually fly. It just crumbled. And Gary's... Got jacked up. Gary's freaking out like, the prizes! <laughs> Nobody saved the prizes! The tickets! Was, everything was flying out towards the gate. Yeah. And I was holding on to the tent. We're all I was like, we can't it. lose this tent. And Gary's like, 
yelling at me. What are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> like, what do we do? If only like, we had an event planner. Like, we've seen, yeah, we've uh, seen Gary, like, stressed a little bit, but I think that was the most stressed I've ever seen Gary well, in my life. it's because I got jacked up. The thing smoked me. <laughs> And then I had to like do a like debrief with uh, the team back at the shop. They're like, "So we hear you got hurt." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" So then we had to like carry everything in, and I'm panicking because we have to be live on air. I'm trying to like hook everything up, and usually yeah. that's not my job. It's a big scramble. Yeah, and I'm like on the phone. Gary's like, "We have to go on in like ten minutes." I'm like, "Gary, I know." It's like I don't know. You're not helping. It's like I don't know what's happening. Yeah. It's like so chaotic. Oh, and then man, yeah, and then our something. tent was messed, and then John had to come and we take broke it, the tent. but he couldn't collapse it or do anything with it so we all had to carry this giant messed up mangled tent and he's like kicking it and swearing at it trying to get it in this giant rock truck and yeah that was like the craziest i had to have ever. a sit down meeting the next day with bosses <laughs> because it like i had like a big cut someone like it was nothing major it yeah. just like clipped me and i was like yeah so then they're like we hear we, we hear you got hurt like is everything okay I'm like man i got cut like well we have to fill out a report I'm like man it's like nothing yeah. <laughs> to be but more worried about all the shit we lost in the wind yeah. really. <laughs> like the several t-shirts and tickets yeah. and and probably money and if only we so had crazy. a planner you yeah. could have saw this coming yeah, yeah. well well i was technically I you don't even know. We watched it. We watched it roll right up. I don't and know if that's. Like, this probably isn't a good. Yeah, thing. I don't know if I, that's when I was full time either. But I did Wendy's ask them. Wendy did say on the podcast today. She's like, nobody listens to me. I did <laughs> ask them. I was like, I think we should go inside, and they're like, no. And I was like, nobody listens. I get like have Legit. all these good ideas, and then you know why it goes no one bad, listens to her? Because she's like, the pretty blonde girl, and so. everyone's like, oh, you just, you just. <laughs> Keep looking pretty over there. It's good. We oh. let the big let the adults take care of. But this. my ideas are so good. I know. I'm the, I, I always have your back. Name several times where I've said something. I'm like, this is gonna be a bad idea, and then it was. And then I have to go back and be like, listen, I told you like more than once. Sometimes yeah. like five, six times that this was gonna be a bad idea, and you still did it anyway. And not only still did it, surprised when it doesn't work. Yeah. That's the big I thing. I know. I'm like, how are you surprised that that happened? Anyway. And then you just have to like sit back and be like. Like what more could I have done? <laughs> People like, do you want me to, to me. take it? All? Yeah, you see, you got an authoritative yeah. Yeah. aura to you. I was also telling Cora though that like sh her authority at work is like way up there, right? She keeps on climbing that ladder, whereas all most of the jobs I have, I'm like just like at the base right level. So yeah. like I have to still report to somebody who has to say yes because if I was in that level, I would just do yeah, it just or do tell it. the person yeah. to do it like this is dumb we shouldn't be doing this like i don't i shouldn't need to ask you know what i mean i really feel like you have been pigeonholed in uh, your event planning career me yeah well i like event planning but i it's like too much for me now it's I a lot it's a thankless job yes and yeah, it's like you can't be evenings, nice weekends you, you can't be nice no. yeah and That's nobody what it, understands nice. how much yeah. work goes into them and they yeah. only see like the end result they don't mm -hmm. see any of the chaos behind the scenes yeah like the blade like even just a blades game like it all is so seamless and whatever but yeah. when you like go and sit down after the game you're talking to the event planner and you're like these are all the things i went wrong nobody else sees it but all of us behind the scenes see it and it's just like constantly trying to fix those little things even though nobody really is ever seeing it you know what i mean it's totally. like so crazy it never ends thankless job is what that would be called i think very yeah. thankless very yeah 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 Shout out to event planners. Yeah. Yeah, actually. So Oof. my friend Amelia out there. Uh, Amelia. I know Amelia. Yeah. She, She's sweet. And the thing is, is she would sit there every time after a game and just we would just ream her with things that went wrong. And you just have to not take it personally. I was yeah. telling her that like you need a leader in those positions that like won't feel personally victimized. Like I might not be the best for that because I'd be like, ooh, my heart. You know what I mean? Not you. Never. <laughs> But like you no just need to be way. really strong and be like, okay, I'll fix it next time. Like Cora's really good at that too, I think. Yeah, uh, constructive feedback. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. a difference between, you know, negative feedback and constructive. And a short yes. memory. You need a short memory. <laughs> you have to be able to let that <laughs> shit just run right off. <laughs> just forget about you, it. You yeah, just, but you need the memory to remember all the things that you need for the event. Yeah. Mm, so it's like that's a fine line you got to walk there. I yeah, think. it's just like it's like. I don't know. I'm not going to say that. Never mind. I take that back. <laughs> Word vomited that almost. Word vomited. I was going to say it's like when I take a math test. You just said you weren't going to say I'm going to say it anyway. When, when, I, <laughs> when, no, I take, when I take a math test and I know all the answers and I write it out and then I just forget everything I just learned. That's yeah, literally well, how. That's like, that's <laughs> any high school test. Well, it's not just high school. It's like university and college. And I don't know if you ever did that or if the actual information stuck in your head. Mm, 
depend <laughs> depended on like even after the third time of I was studying it but yeah <laughs> I'm going through a class yeah <laughs> that's like yeah I had to take sport management twice and I feel like that actually stuck in my mind the second time I did it so <laughs> well here's the big question now do you feel like this was uh close to as good as your original show that you did <sighs> yeah Sure. Hey, there it is. See, yeah. <laughs> I'm still so hurt that power, that happened. You're supposed to forget about it. Short memory. Oh, yeah. that's why I'm not a good event planner, I guess. I don't know. It's the you're too memories. emotional. You got too many. <laughs> I think I've I think I've ODD or whatever when you like obsessively think about something over and over and over again. Oh, that's yeah. OCD. OCD. Yeah, because sometimes I'm like thinking and I'm like, man, I've been thinking about this for 10 years. Why do I like, why am I still thinking about this? I don't think that's OCD. That might be be something a little bit, something a little bit bigger going on there. Oh, there's so much going on in here. No kidding. Jeez. Then planning. Yeah. One time. So anyway, I was going to ask you for a question. If you ever had this event where something big and dramatic happened besides the windstorm i think that's a good story the windstorm <laughs> that one. was that was something yeah that was definitely memorable with it all just you know going to shit mm-hmm. i feel like <laughs> i've done a lot of events yes but i try to have the short memory mm, so, so I, I just sort of block them out just move them on yeah like i did the the fire in the kitchen cook-off this year a very recent one big event and uh there was a mix-up right off the bat we had one group of people who were supposed to start the show who told me how they wanted to do then i was sitting with someone who told me what we were supposed to do and then the person running the whole thing told me something different too oh that happens lots as well when you're <laughs> full of all these things you have to do and then you get up there and you're like well which one should i pick yeah. <laughs> and then i called out uh, the one team and they weren't ready and they were all in the back and then we missed like this big it was like a really emotional tribute and it sort of got pushed around and went to the wrong spot. And then the third part of it went horribly wrong. And I went <laughs> back and sat down at the table. And the dude, like one of the head dudes, is like, well, at least we got that out of the way. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, that's... And, you know, we still got it done and the show goes on. The show always goes on. So yeah. you just go out there and you keep going. And it was great after that. But it was just like a, I felt really, really bad because if I was a better MC, I would have went to everyone before and said, okay. Cause I went a couple times to the one guy's like, no, this is how we're going to do it. And I was mm-hmm. like, okay. And then other people start telling you and then right before it's time to go, then they hand you a mic and you're going. But yeah. a good event has like a timeline and oh, yeah. they, they do a printout for the MC. Yeah. So that everyone's Absolutely. on the same page. Everyone should have that, yeah. that printout. And we all did, but it got oh. changed. Oh. <laughs> it got changed That also happens. Yeah. Like, and that's and there's there's no one's fault. That's the other thing too, because everyone's doing so much. Like it was, it was such a big yeah. event. You had mm-hmm. hundreds of people, and it, you were like literally in charge of them too, because they were mm-hmm. part of the event. Yeah. So there was a lot going on, and it it went incredibly. Like it was a fantastic time, but that start was just like oof. I think like felt that's bad. Like the beauty of events almost is like it's so exciting and exhilarating because you don't you really don't know what's going to happen because it's like live just like the show you know you never know what's going to happen and that's what makes it so exciting so i that's what i feel about events too like every like when i worked at the blades in the rush so much work went into it hours and hours and hours and then the day happened and that's like the most exciting day you know it's the easiest one. Yeah, and everything could go wrong, but it's like you're still so excited. You're with the the people who are having fun, and although you know you did that wrong, you see all the people still having fun. You're like, okay, like we still made this happen for them. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, it's amazing. That that's the best part about events is when they're done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, then like, and then you gotta move on to the next one, and the next one, and the, the next, next one. one. Yeah. 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 Give yourself some time to enjoy the one though. Enjoy that you made it through the one before you jump right into the next one. Yeah. Do you ever like stand there when you're doing your events and just like think like i did this uh yeah yeah just like the montreal canadians one was pretty cool but with this previous role that i've been i've kind of given away all the events i'm like grateful they're just i had too many oh yeah so now i'm just like have fun guys so <laughs> <to be you. laughs> here do you want my notes from last year Take yeah them. that would be the biggest help is like your notes from the previous year yeah like it's probably already planned you know the absolutely barely any yeah. work to the do person once who you've took done it over it. is my really good friend and um yeah she, i just give her everything and i kind of she calls me and asks me for advice on things but i'm really glad that i'm not planning them anymore yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. I've loved when there's something you can go over. Like when I started, when I did the year with the rush, I got like the 
the full rundown from the year before. Mm -hmm. So I was like, at least I had an idea of what it was mm -hmm. supposed to be like. I still just absolutely the worst Did the job. best. No, the worst. And I'm okay with it. No. It wasn't for me. You were my favorite. What did you do? He thinks he did really bad because he doesn't love lacrosse, but he was my favorite well, what, person. What did you do, like though? a PA what announcer. So oh, a PA an person. announcer. Yeah. Yeah. So the guy before, Gary kind of had a hard time getting in there too because the guy before had been in it since the very start and yeah. everyone was like super ob obsessed with him. They loved him. And they loved him. Yeah. But he just like wasn't. Gonna it, it was work a there it anymore. was a great transition yeah. from that guy to the guy now having me in there because they needed a sacrificial lamb they need someone to go in there and take all the yeah. like you're not our guy it's like yes. yeah I know I get it I understand yeah. and all that but stuff. but the, the next so guy sort of what the did. next guy also got that but the next guy like sorry love love the team I still think you're like the best oh, no. out of the you one we have now I would have he I, was he was so no, good I had people sending me messages. They do that to everyone. Yeah, but like on uh, <laughs> on the Facebook Messenger during the game, on telling the me Facebook what to do. Messenger, you said. Tell me you're not supposed to talk when they're on defense, and I was like, oh. "What? Why did I even look at that?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now like, you're why? like silently. Well, I never there. checked face. It's so <laughs> random. Like I just randomly checked it, and there was like notes on how I was doing and how I was doing so bad. It's like okay. Aww. I anyway, guess that's something. But that's like that's a big thing about being an M like an MC or like an in stand host. They yeah. just get roasted. No matter how long you've been doing it for, like you could probably even ask Croker some stories. Like oh, he yeah, was doing so, it for yeah. years and years. To the last day he was there, he was probably getting roasted by someone that doesn't yeah. know what they're doing and d doesn't realize how hard it is to actually do that job. That's the big thing is mm -hmm. people don't you don't know until I never I never would have dreamed the amount of work that went into PA announcing a lacrosse game. Yeah, and that's like honestly, it was nuts. especially because it's like a game that people aren't typically familiar with. Like the yeah. rules are all so crazy, yeah. and the Very game is so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's you, music pumping the whole time. And you got a headset on, mm -hmm. and you got people over here talking, you telling you stuff. You got people in one feed. You have two feeds, yeah. and you have people there telling you stuff, and then you have other people telling you stuff. And if you talk back to that person, you have to hit one button, but the other button goes on over the whole stadium. And it's just like, you, it's, everyone's just yelling at you yeah, the whole time. Way That's more than radio, hey? Yeah, all I got to do is press that one stop. Oh, that. Like, Gary, come on, get the crowd going. And it was just dead, and the team's down like 12 goals. And I'm like, <laughs> Uh, I don't even know what to say anymore. I said that literally. I was like, guys, I have nothing left to say. Like, the, just tell me. I'll just parrot them. The crowd also has been like slowly, like not been like into it lately. Um, well, yeah, because they're not winning anymore. Yeah, and so problem. like it's like a super dead start sometimes, which is like crazy. It or they tough. or they come like later on when the game is like yeah. on or whatever. So I I'm feel forever that. grateful that I had the opportunity because it was really cool to just try. Yeah. And to do. That is cool. And I don't want to do it again. And yeah. now I know, yeah. Like, despise <laughs> it. I despised it. I also. It was the worst. But I loved seeing you come there every day. It was fun Because we hadn't yeah. seen each other for yeah. a we while. We got to grow down. And, that was true. And then you met Gavin. Oh, and, and yeah. Shout there's... out to Gavin. I should send him a message. I know. I've been trying to get him to move back here for a long time. I know. He won't. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he won't. But he but... was the sweetest. He always went to bat for me. I was like, yeah, man. Like, what's good? He's like, don't worry. I'll take care of it. I'll, I'll do this. I'll do that. Yeah. I hope he, he comes sweet. back and we can see him and get him on the podcast. We'll I think he would be great here. He, he great would. Here. Yeah. And he's done like a lot of things. He moved away and is with another sports team. He has probably some really good stories as well. So Very funny guy. I don't know if you... If I ever told you about Gavin. He got me. He's the only guy to ever get me to go to the bar. He took me to the... Uh, he went. He went to Outlaw's. It was horrible. And it was, it was so the worst bad. experience of my life. Gary's like, I can't be here. I gotta yeah, go. He's can't like, just waited for Gavin sober, to get there. Gary? Or yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. oh yeah. And yeah. It was wild. I remember sitting there and the, everyone was like in their mid twenties and everyone's <laughs> crushing shots and just and trying to get life. all over like, like young the... kids like basically having intercourse in the yeah. every corner of the building and I'm just like what am I doing here guys like what is happening and he's like as soon as Gavin gets here I'm leaving yeah. and he was so happy when he saw me though and that's all I he was about. and then he totally yeah. did not notice any anyone else was there because the dancers really liked Gavin yeah and they would like pick him up and be like Gavin and like, like twirl dancers. him around like the, like the, the cheerleaders, the, rush cheerleaders. Oh. the cheer team yeah so he was like all into all into it it and was then, fun that was his last that night was funny. Yeah. there and then I have this funny story where he started messaging the group chat, the work group chat, last day at work. And he said, <laughs> I'm stuck in the lobby. 
and uh, me and another person were still awake we had just got home from the bar and we're like what lobby are you stuck in i think it was like me and amelia or something and then he's like i'm stuck in the lobby and we thought he meant at sas tell center yeah because i'm like why are you <laughs> telling us you're there, stuck yeah. in the lobby if you're and why are you at sas uh... tell center in front of the whole group chat and then we kind of like we're like i said gavin you're embarrassing yourself text me <laughs> <laughs> and then no they, group and then, chat anymore. Yeah, and then I texted him and I was like, where are you? He's like, oh, I got in. I was like, are you at SAS Dell Center? He's like, no, I'm at my apartment. <laughs> I'm like, He slept in the lobby of <laughs> yeah. his apartment. Oh, he yeah. couldn't even get in. So so then every time somebody left like, or were wanted to yeah. like, like, or they were leaving or they quit or whatever, or like gave their resignation or are just moving on, they would be like, okay, I'm stuck in the lobby. And then they would leave the, <laughs> leave the chat. chat. <laughs> And I don't know if Gavin knows that. that what we a did good that. way to leave He left it. his a mark. Legacy. He it left was, his mark. Yeah. It was, it was so funny. And then every time we would like drink or whatever, we'd be like, are you getting stuck in the lobby? Like, <laughs> Don't get stuck in that lobby. Yeah. We never, ever got stuck in the lobby. That's just too much. Sorry, Gavin. But <laughs> it was a good He time. set a very good standard. That was yeah. like, a, like a mic drop. Yeah. He's like dropping his earpiece. Just, <laughs> yeah. It was I'm good. I'm out in the lobby. Yeah. So lots of fun times were had there. That's so. it. Absolutely. Well, you guys. I feel like we did a great job here. What do you think? Mm. It was very fun. What yeah. do you got over there? What's in the what's in the pies? Oh yeah. Let's see what we got for uh, hardcore presents today. So I was supposed to go camping. Hopefully she still is. We don't know I yet. Probably won't be going. My uh, kid guy had to get picked up from daycare. She's oh. sick. So I pre-make meals and I made some peach cobblers. Come on. Yep, for you guys. You guys Peach can cobblers. fight over who gets what. I brought Look some for this. Brando and uh, Ryan Look at if you want. Cobblers. This is you, Brando, Ryan. I got the big one? Sure. He, I think you need probably the, I think you need the big one. <laughs> we know what your fridge looks like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you guys shamed me into doing dishes today. Aww. Like, I actually filled up the sink and did dishes because I was like, man, if they walk inside and see this, it's going to be even worse than the empty fridge. <laughs> Well, it's it, they're good to have for when, when you put it on the fire. But there's a fire ban right now, so it's the worst when you, it doesn't even feel like yeah. you're going camping when That's there's tough. a fire ban. So yeah, it's very tough. Don't put these in the oven. Just yeah. scoop them out, put them in a bowl, and warm Love them up. Them. Absolutely, I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. Her name is Hardcore. This one here is Brooksy. They are the past our bedtime super team. Even when the audio doesn't record, they still Ooh. bring incredible entertainment to you, as they've done right here today. Yes, it's a great job, you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess you're taking a week off next week. You? Yes, I'll be gone. You? You're back. <coughs> back, maybe? Nice. I might be back on Friday, but... Well, we'll I think you should we'll try see. because it's, uh, as you know, Fridays are the best days around here. Yeah. They have a lot of fun. Yeah, lot, I'm going very out, little work I'm going out with my friends after. I'm going on a quest to the wasteland. Oh, yeah, I'm coming. But I don't know if I'm going to be in the wasteland. You've got to tell me a little bit more about this. Yeah. You're going questing? No, we're just going out. You're questing in the wasteland, dude. She's getting in the wasteland. You made it sound like it's something really cool. Yeah, our mission is to find as many cackles as we can. Cackles? Yeah, like laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> Look out, Saskatoon. The quest has begun. They'll hear our laughs from miles away. If you yeah. see these jabronis rolling around, or even worse, if you hear them, just run the other way. No, come say hi. Come uh, say hi, yeah. Okay, yeah, we'd well, love, to, that. We'd love yeah. to chat with you. We do just love to just chat. don't get this one to plan an event for you, that's all. <laughs> She can. She can. No, more. you were good. You're very good. I'm good, but I'll think about it for ten years after. That's yeah. We got to yeah. work on that <laughs> post yeah. post traumatic event syndrome. I, know. I hear you. It's all See right. you next Friday. Hell yeah, girl! Great job today, guys. Uh, thank you again. You are amazing. We love you, and thank you for all that you do. Bye. 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 All right, there you go. The past our bedtime gals in the house. As we continue to roll on, on this Friday, there was a Ryder football game yesterday. They took on the top team in the East as the top team from the West. That top team in the East is the Cody Fajardolis, Montreal Alouettes. And to give us a breakdown, we would now like to bring in our Ryder Insider... The reason the Riders lost. Hello, reason Riders lost. Are you there? Are you there? At least Hello. tell me he saw that we called him the reason the Riders lost. Is it on there? Why? Oh, it's so quiet. Can you jack him up? I got a little bit. Give me some juice if we can. Come on, baby. No, did we lose him? Well, that's just me coming through my own headset. <laughs> 
Oh, LB, we had such a good joke for you. We put your name under there as the reason the riders lost. And yeah, then we lost our... Should we do some live engineering right now? We lost our TV to the left of the big TV with all of the camera angles. So we were just trying to do this by audio, but I don't even have you coming through now. Can, you can't hear me at all? Oh, he's, I can barely hear him. I can hear you, buddy. Talk to me. I'm going to be like a live on the... Yeah, okay. LB. I'm talking, how, how can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you, dude. Okay, I'm not going to say another word. You tell me exactly what the hell happened to the riders, buddy. All right, well, basically, um, you know I'm not a Shea Patterson fan, and uh, Shea Patterson decided that uh, he was going to play great for the first half and then that he was going to uh, crap the bed for the second half. So um, our defense tried to get it done, but uh, unfortunately they couldn't, so... Okay, so I heard the defense tried to get it done, and they couldn't. You blaming the defense now? The only thing that's got them this far? You blaming the defense, LB? Oh, I'm, not, I'm not blaming the defense. I started off by saying that it's Shea Patterson's fault. Okay. All right, well, I can barely hear you, so you can just go ahead and make fun of me as much as you want. Oh, you're, oh I knew it was going to go there. Now I'm even more upset. Because you've been waiting for this. You've been saying, oh, this is what we'll do. You translate for me. This is good. All right. So we're going to use our translator, the phenom in the booth here. Your guy that you love to hate, the guy who doesn't deserve to even be on the team, you're blaming him for this loss and not that defense. Because, I, again, 20 points is a pretty good show up for a defense. I'll give you that. Well, yeah. I mean, like I said, he did great for the first half. And then on the second half, he couldn't. They didn't score at all. It was a, a scoreless second half. Dang. Okay. So sc scoreless second half is usually a bad thing, right? I saw it half. I thought it was over already. I was like, oh, they got another one in the bag. And then it just didn't work out. Now, is this just Shea Patterson being Shea Patterson, or is this something, you know, a little bit uh, worse? Is this a bad sign? Do we need Trevor Harris back right now? Well, I thought we needed Trevor Harris back since the beginning, but like, it's uh, it's just the inconsistency. That's just Shea Patterson being being too inconsistent. Nice, Shea Pat. I, I love having to translate. This is really cool. So Shea Patterson being inconsistent, the same exact reason that you always use. He's just not your guy. You wish Jake Delo Delodega, Delagada, Delagada. Jake Dolagala. Uh, okay. LB's uh, he's a little bit upset that they went with Patterson instead of his Jake buddy. So before we let you go, I would like to know from you, LB, our Rider Insider, right there on the Rider Insider levels, right below the great Jamie Nyballs over on the green zone, where do the Riders go from here? Is this going to be one of those ones where it's like, uh, it's going to linger for a bit? Or is this going to be sort of a motivator to say, okay, like we almost had that one. We've got to keep rolling. Um, I, I don't really know, uh, if I'm being honest. I think, I think this is a turning point. The last time they lost, uh, I remember saying, this is good. This is going to be the, 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 the kick that they need to, to keep it moving. Um, and then now I'm not so sure, uh, if we don't, I mean, we, we should have Trevor Harris back. He's on the sixth game and it's been four games without him. So within the next two, for sure, we should have him back. Um, but I don't know. I think, uh, I think the defense is getting tired. We've been relying too much on our defense. I think we need to bring the offense of the offense up so that we can bring a little more, um, we can relax a little on the defense um, so that they're not working quite as hard and get it done with the offense. That's the thing. Okay. This has been great. I actually almost heard him there for a second. That's crazy. I guess, it, where are you right now? You're all in Victoria, BC? Is that what's yeah, happening? Yeah, we're sitting on the beach right now. Yeah? Oh, beautiful. Okay, well, you get back to it. Uh, you give your beautiful family a big uh, hug from all of us here at your, at your other home. And uh, just know that the Riders lost because of you, and you are the only reason, my friend. Your negativity really brought them down, and I'm very upset with you, but it's okay. Go, Riders, go. <laughs> Live from Victoria, B.C., it's LB! Thank you, bro! Woo! That was good. 
you know, for a Zoom that had no audio and no video, I feel like that went pretty good. We were talking earlier about how uh, the magic of this place is how it's always live and anything goes and anything can happen, and that's just another great example of that exact thing happening. All right, well, geez. That's almost it for, man, we've, such a crazy week. It feels like, you know, you, all weekend goes by super fast because the weekend, but then the week gets going, and then all of a sudden the week's gone, and then it's the weekend. Nothing ever, nothing ever goes slow. It's very upsetting to me. You know what's not upsetting, though? It's uh, all of the amazing members of our beautiful team here. I'm going to go for one. Let me know if you can pop up a Duff right here. I'm going to aim it right about there because I don't got the big screen again. Duffernab.com, that is the place. I got to be close on there. I got to be. Oh, that's so cool. Head on over there. You can become an advertiser, become a sponsor, become a contributor, whatever it is. If you think like us, if you think that the world is sort of a big pile of crap right now and people need to change, people need to be kinder, people need to be better, not just to themselves, but to each other. If you think this world needs more karma, this is the place for you. We say it all the time. We're not in the business of bringing people down. We're only in the business of bringing people up. That is what we do. And we surround ourselves with those type of people. And if that's you, let us know. Hit us up again at DufferNav.com and become a part of this amazing team because I promise you, it is a lot of fun. Again, a big welcome to Kevin and the team over at Hammer Time Roofing. Glad to have you on board. You guys are awesome. We'll uh, probably end up introducing him to you next week. As well, our friends over at Aquaman Limited, water monitoring, sampling, as well as underwater drone inspections and so much more in Alberta and Saskatchewan. Hit up our friends over at Aquaman Limited. Uh, nickel Plumbing. I was golfing with two-thirds of the uh, hierarchy of the great Nickel Plumbing today with my brother and my dad, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, there's a reason Nickel Plumbing has been around so long from my grandpa down to my dad and to my brother. It's just great people doing great things and they care about you. And it's very rare nowadays, it feels like, in this world. I just ranted about being a nasty place. So uh, the more people like that, the better as far as we are concerned. I believe now there's only one thing left to do as Phenom is on the ones and twos. I'm going to pop this thing right in there. By the way, this is huge. Huge shout out to Cassandra and the whole team over at Sound Hearing Impressions. We love you guys. Thank you for hooking us up. If you ever need an earpiece, uh, they're the place to go. They form fit them. You don't even know they're there. Unless you have no feet coming through and then, you, <laughs> then you're pushing on a little bit. But I promise you it is not this piece in any way. We rolling? Okay. See, I don't even have it coming through here now. Oh, okay. Well, now I'm just worried that I'm having all sorts of issues. But at least we made it through another week. You give me a countdown when we're about uh, 20 seconds there, Phenom. Okay, I'm going to start saying our goodbyes uh, to everyone who contributed throughout the week today. A big shout out to my man, Uncle Grandma, the great Graham Templeman in studio last night. We shot a couple more episodes of uh, Storytime with Uncle Grandma, which is a new show that's going to be debuting right away. Uh, thank you to him. An absolutely amazing dude. Uh, to Phenom, as well as Dragon. And I'll be the big three in the producer tooth booth. Thank you to you guys for always keeping us on the rails and keeping this show rolling. Even when everything else around it falls apart, we still find a way. Just like love, we find a way. This studio, man. It's so cool that being live, like live shows, this is the best. If there's any advice to anybody trying to do something like this, go live. Just do live shows. You learn so much, man. It's such a different feel and it's so cool. So just go live. Uh, Wednesday, we had Adrian Blarge on. Our weekly Wednesday visit with him from beautiful Australia. Uh, Tuesday, we had Matt from all the bands, and he was crushed. We had the guitar go, and he was teaching us how to sweep arpeggios, which is always the coolest thing. And we had so much. The Hardcora and the Brooksy, a.k.a. the Pastor Bedtime Gals. Uh, Network Ryan, Uncle Brando, everybody involved. Thank you to all of you for stopping by as you uh, did throughout this week and uh, every week, really. And uh, we'll be back on Monday at 4 p.m. because we go live 4 to 5 p.m. each and every Monday right here on YouTube. It means a lot to Maggie. Thank you to you, young lady. She's always hitting her spots. Now she knows it's almost supper time. So she's getting ready to go eat, and she's very excited. By the way, incredible food from our friends at Pet Planet on A Street, your Pets Natural Grocer. Uh, we are going to be doing a little bit more 
I guess, shooting and videoing and all that stuff in the next week or so as we introduce some more shows rolling out. One Bad Podcast out today. Brand new All Out of Angst podcast. It's an audio podcast. It's so good with Uncle Mike and Matt from all the bands. That one dropped yesterday, episode three, which is very fun. We bust out the guitar for that one. So uh, have a uh, little peeks at all those things as we continue to grow here. And don't forget, karma is very, very real. All right. Be kind. You'll notice good things will start happening to you, I promise. Have a great weekend. Don't get blown away by that wind and don't get too hot out there. And we'll see you back here on Monday at 4 p.m., all right? Thanks again for stopping by and I love you and appreciate you greatly. You take care.